Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Um, I love the title of today's webinar. Um, it talks about some of our favorite things, including money. The monetization revolution. Increase your productivity and your bottom line. Um, it's brought to you by Channel Partners. I am your host, Howard M. Cohen. Uh, my title is Senior Resultant. I um, write for and about the industry. You may have seen me featured in several of uh, Channel Partners publications. Um, and I'm going to be your host today, and we'll talk about our guest in just a moment. Before we do, though, I want to talk a little bit about how you can participate in today's presentation. Uh, first of all, let's talk about technical difficulties. It may happen. Something may go wrong. The slides may seem to get stuck. Uh, so I want to let you know that there is a help button on your player console. If you've located it now, don't press it. Uh, but if you do run into any kind of trouble, uh, you can click that, and you'll be getting immediate assistance in solving common things that can go wrong with with a session like this. Okay. I also want to let you know that we, we're looking for your questions. We want to try to keep this as interactive as possible. So you can submit your questions by simply typing them into the question window on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, then hit the Submit button. They'll come here, and at the end of the session, I'll be reading them to our guest, and we'll be talking about them, and hopefully we'll be able to answer your questions. Um, feel free to send your questions in at any time. Don't wait for the end. Uh, we'll, we'll be glad to take them in any time that you can send them. Uh, audio. Hopefully you're all hearing what I'm saying right now. Uh, if you do have any audio difficulties or if the slides freeze up, the easiest way to get restarted is to simply hit the F5 key on your keyboard. The F5 key will, of course, refresh your browser window, and that hopefully will solve any freezing problems, any sound problems that you may be running into. Um, also, if that continues and you miss some of the presentation, please don't worry. Uh, by this afternoon, a recording of this presentation will be available to you, and as a matter of fact, you'll be receiving an email from Channel Partners uh, letting you know that it's available for you to download and to catch up on what you may have missed or to share with others, and we hope you certainly hope you will. Okay, a little bit more about today's webinar now. Uh, it's being sponsored by Blue Logics. I'll be the moderator and presenter, and I'm going to be joined by Tim Cook who is the founder and chief revenue officer for Blue Logics. Tim has more than 20 years of experience rapidly scaling revenue and building businesses. Um, his specialties include developing partner ecosystems with software vendors, VARs, MSPs, the guys that you love to partner with, and driving effective sell with, sell through, and sell to relationships. I love that phrase. Um, he also has expertise in building and managing direct enterprise sales, teams with sales recruiting, methodology, planning, forecasting, and analytics. So he's the guy who's going to really help um, help you understand how what we mean by monetizing uh, and uh, monetizing your business. Okay. So with that, and thank you whoever advanced the slide that I forgot to, I'd like to talk a little bit about the problem that we face. Um, it's been arising in more and more places that your partners are concerned about account control. Some vendors have made very loud statements that they want the partner to remain in control. They'll do everything to support it. But as we move further and further into the cloud with all kinds of new support and billing and provisioning and other problems, it isn't quite as simple as it used to be. So let's take a look uh, at those challenges. Uh, first of all, let's start off. You know this, and hopefully your sub-agents, your master agents, your partners of any kind uh, know this also. And that is that when your agents and partners succeed, you succeed. And those of you who aren't reminding your partners regularly, now would be a good time to do it because there's a lot of skepticism, and we're going to talk a little bit about what creates that. In the old telecom channel, all that everybody ever sold was a carrier circuit. Carrier circuits were the premier product. There were others, you know, 
ancillary products perhaps here and there, but the main bulk of their revenue came from the sale of carrier circuits. And of course, those were recurring revenue sales long before they coined the acronym MRR. The telecom channel provided wonderful monthly recurring revenue opportunities to all of its agents, sub-agents, and other kinds of partners. Then came the cloud. Um, today, you know, telecom agents see the cloud as a workload. They don't see the mystery necessarily that IT partners see. You know, all that, you know, oh my God, is it going to displace this or that? They don't worry about that. They see it as an additional workload that will drive the sale of more circuits. That's a good thing. Um, they also see that each cloud service represents yet another monthly recurring revenue opportunity for them. So now they don't just have the circuit getting them to the internet, but they have all of the different cloud services and cloud utilities and other services that need to go along with it, including support and other services they may provide themselves. So given that this is a great opportunity, and that all of these cloud services represent more workloads and more reasons to drive more bandwidth need, the challenge is making sure that we keep everybody's wants and needs aligned, carefully aligned. And we're talking about your wants and needs as well as your agents, your partners, and their customers. Everybody's wants and needs. So let's take a look at that. Let's start off with what customers want and need. Everybody wants and needs to make more money. That's kind of a given, but I figure it doesn't hurt to overstate the obvious. Everybody wants to make more money, including your customers, and they're investing in these services specifically to help them do that. They don't rent carrier circuits, and they don't sell cloud services just for the fun of it. They're doing it to build revenue. Customers want a single invoice. They want to be billed the way they think of the service. And it's got, to, uh, it's got to come from their primary provider, their single point of contact, if you will, and match their purchase order. From an operational standpoint, literally every kind of company wants this all the time. If they issue a purchase order, they want the invoice to come in matching the purchase order so they can mix match the two and tick and tie them, and then account for them properly. Makes life much easier for them. Also, they know that they're getting what they asked for. So they want that single invoice from one provider. They want a single point of contact to deal with, and they want an invoice that matches their purchase order. All of this ultimately is there to minimize confusion. They simply want it to be less confusing. Simpler operations are better operations. That also minimizes disruption. And that's one of the biggest fears that any company, especially our customers, face. They don't want their operations disrupted. They don't want to suddenly find that everything is ground to a halt because they failed to pay for some portion of their communication schema. So it's very important that we make this as easy as possible for them. At the same time, your agents and partners have some needs and wants that hopefully coincide with those and align well with those. Let's take a look. They, too, want to make more money. Uh, and again, we're overstating the obvious, but they're selling your services, your products, because they want to make money, too. They definitely want account control. Those of you who have been in the... Um, been in the business for any length of time. By the way, uh, my title, Senior Resultant, was coined because I'm all about results. That's how I was raised in the industry, and I'm fairly old. So I've been around the industry for quite some time, and account control has always been an issue. It's always been something that, you know, the conflict was to be avoided. And people have introduced all kinds of plans that, people have very quickly figured out how to game. Gaming the plan has been an occupation forever. Uh, they, too, want to be the single point of contact for their customer. They want their customer to come to them. Even if they need to escalate a problem, 
They want to be that first point of contact that the customer always depends upon. They want that relationship. They nurture that relationship. And quite frankly, the biggest reason you want those partners is because of the relationships they have. They're already in a relationship with customers. You don't then have to find the customer and penetrate them. You simply align with your partners and they bring you in. So you want them to be the single point of contact. They also want billing control, and that's been somewhat of a challenge. Billing control sounds great. However, many of them don't have billing systems that can support recurring revenue, issuing the same invoice month after month or with slight adjustments due to overages or other adjustments. So they're needing help there. We'll talk more about that. Of course, they also want pricing control. In many cases, they may be able to command a higher price than you recommend, which is wonderful, and you certainly want them to see your product, your service, as something that does that for them. The other way in which they use pricing control is through bundling. They will literally hide the price of almost everybody's services. And they will simply offer specific packages composed of a combination of your services and other providers' services for one stated fee. Now, the biggest benefit of that, the most powerful thing about that, is that they can't be shopped. They, you, your service can't be shopped. The customer doesn't know what each individual service costs, so they can't go comparing it against the other providers that may be competing with you. And this is great because you don't end up in a nickel and diming fight that nobody wants to have with a customer. The other thing that they want to do is they want to reduce their operating expense. If you come along and can take some of the operations off their plate but still allow them control, they're all ears. They want to hear about that. They want to know how they can make more, doing less with more control. And it's not as crazy as it sounds. It's very, very viable. And finally, we save the best for last. Let's talk about what you need and want. And I guess you figured out the first bullet. You want to make more money. Hopefully, you also want to be easy to do business with. Uh, it was Compaq back in the 1980s and 90s that you know, had as a slogan, we want to be easy to do business with. And I think a lot of industry people have remembered that and carried it forward. So you as a provider of services and products that your agents and partners resell, you want to make it easy for them to interact with you, to source your products and services, to gain support for them, to build them, provision them, and ultimately to manage them and renew and renew and renew. The good news is, and I speak to more and more manufacturers who agree with this, they, they want to give their agents and partners full account pricing and billing control. Not for nothing, but you don't want to carry literally hundreds of thousands or millions of receivable accounts all over the planet. That's why you have a partner channel. That's why you have an agent channel. That's why there are master agents, because you wanted fewer accounts receivable. Now, the master agents are your accounts receivable, and the sub-agents are their accounts receivable. They've taken that off your plate. So you have every reason to want to give full account pricing and billing control to your partners at every level. And yes, you want to carry fewer receivable accounts. You also want to reduce your operating expenses. If you can shift customer billing to your agents and partners, that's great. If you can shift billing to anybody, that means you don't have to run a system that is billing hundreds of thousands or millions of customers all over the planet. All of this ultimately accelerates the revenue chain from customer to agent or partner to you. The other thing you'd like to have is the kind of insight 
and detail into the agents and partners business that you really could only get before when you were doing the billing. When you were doing the billing, you knew what each agent was selling, you knew which ones renewed, you knew which ones were lost. Um, you had a lot more involvement and a lot more insight. You'd like to get rid of the involvement, get rid of the operating expense, but preserve that insight and maybe even get deeper insights. And good news, today you're going to learn how to do that. One of the things that we talk about a lot these days is the concept of continuous improvement, DevOps, if you will, DevSecOps uh, for, for many of you. Um, we try to create those wonderful feedback loops that tell us what's going wrong so we can immediately respond to it, immediately fix it. It would be great if we can improve upon that in the context of those who sell our services and products, those who support our services and products, and feed that information back to us and our people who manufacture and create those services and products. And that's something you're also going to gain some insight into today. So I have done my best to set up the challenge and hopefully um, you've all, to some extent, resonated with that and can relate to it. And at this point, I'd like to invite you to learn how to meet the challenge with our guest, Tim Cook. Tim? Thank you, Howard. That was a uh, great uh, insight there from a senior resultant, so I appreciate that. Um, I wanted to start off the first couple of slides and just read a couple of quotes from Forrester because I think it sets the context for the con for my conversation today. Um, so the first one is clean, enriched, and consolidated channel data will better inform each step in the partner's journey, driving more engaging interactions and stronger sales enablement. Improving program automation, flexibility, and self-service will promote partner engagement, loyalty, and sales execution. And that is one of the things that uh, we're delivering for uh, the channel managers and, and the folks that are you know, in the trenches working with their partners uh, to, 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 to gain better visibility and better enable those partners for success. The next is kind of from a customer perspective. Um, with 73% of business buyers finding the web more convenient to make purchases, and Forrester predicting that 17% of all B2B transactions will happen through e-commerce by 2023, the end of traditional resale, resale will accelerate in 2019. And it's that last part of that last sentence that uh, I wanted to start uh, my conversation with. Um, so what, the, what, do, what, do they, what does that mean, the end of traditional resale? And, and what does that look like? <clears throat> and I think you'll, you're familiar with it. And it's a challenge that uh, is a new challenge for, for, for the industry and, and for many of our partners and service providers. And it really starts around the uh, service provider end user portal. So if you think about, you know, if you're a cloud service provider of any sort, whether it's UCAS, Compute, it doesn't matter. You as a service provider have built a very sophisticated portal where your partners and customers can come and uh, acquire more resources or deploy more licenses, uh, essentially manage the assets and manage the services uh, that you're providing for them. Well, this creates some specific, some, some very, uh, you know, uh, very specific problems in the traditional resale model. So, um, one is that you know the portals now control really the revenue events. Any kind of new orders or moves, ads or changes are, are triggered in the service provider portal. So, how do I, as a reseller, get in front of that? I can't resell. Uh, you know, the, 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 this revenue event because it's happening through the service provider portal. So it really kind of throws off the whole resale model. And if I try to circumvent that service provider portal to try to maybe resell it, then it really removes a lot of the value that the product or service is delivering ultimately to the end customer. So what's happened is, is that, you know, 
you know, instead of trying to, you know, you know, people have realized that, look, it's just not going to work to resell this stuff anymore, this delivered by, through the cloud where these service pro provider portals are in front of. And they do deliver a lot of value, so we don't want to diminish them. Um, but how do we get paid? Well, you know, kind of what evolved was the agent model. Well, okay, well, I'll tell you what. You go out there and sell it. We'll deliver the services. Uh, and, and when your customer comes in, and adds more services or, or generates more revenue events, we'll just pay you a commission on that. Well, that's great. I mean, I still make money, but you know, there's really a lack of visibility uh, you know, that you lose as a service provider that you had with your partner to identify upsell or cross-sell opportunities. That intelligence is no longer out in the field anymore. It's maybe an inside account manager sitting you know, in, in some other location. It also diminishes the valuation of that partner because you know, they no longer have top line revenue. And top line revenue is often, especially in the MRR world, uh, you know, how valuation is determined for a company and you know, how their partners build value. So they, they, uh, that if the top line revenue shifts to bottom line, you know, shifts to just commissions, their, their top line revenue has shrunk by you know, maybe 80%. Um, it creates an additional burden on the service provider because the service provider now has to invoice the customers directly. And it affects the service provider's uh, you know, reach into the market where you know, these partners, as Howard was mentioning, they have these relationships already. Um, so if, uh, if the partner doesn't feel like that they're going, giving that relationship away to somebody else, after fostering it sometimes for decades, it's just something they're not really, you know, excited about doing. So, so that's 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 kind of where we where we've landed is with this agent model, and, and I'm suggesting that there's another way. And so, um, the other way is really, uh, you know, how, how do I enable um, a partner uh, in the post sale environment? Because in the sales environment, that's all happening in the portal. How do I enable that partner post-sale to be able to generate top-line revenue and maintain that, that, that customer ownership? Well, the first thing I need to do is separate the portal and the billing process. Okay, so those are two separate processes. Maintain the portal, keep doing all the great stuff the service providers and all the great tools and, and resources the service provider provides in their portals, but peel the billing out and, 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 and give that to the partner, give them the ability to build the customer directly. And the way that we do that is we actually, it's, it's, it's what we call rebilling technically. We're just taking, in, we're asking you as a service provider to, don't, instead of invoicing the customer directly, invoice your partner and let your partner rebuild that invoice to the customer on their, on their invoice and be the payable. And, um, yeah, it, and it really makes the process so much easier because one of the things you don't have to replicate is the billing logic. Everything that comes through from, uh, from, from your invoice is carried forward onto their invoice of the customer. So there's no, you know, no, no uh, reproduction of how you bill things. It's just a straight, you know, it's like a pass through with a markup. Um, we also, this, this also uh, enables the partner to engage with new buyers, right? The CIO or IT director isn't the buyer anymore in a lot of cases. In a lot of cases, it's marketing or it's sales or it's somebody else that needs resources specific to their role. Your, if your partner's in the field, if they're, they're, they're on the front line, it's much easier for them to access those, 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 uh, those buyers, those line of business buyers in the customers than it is, than it is for you to access them through traditional channels. We also, it also needs to be able to support a, not only a direct um, service provider to partner to customer billing model, but also it needs to be able to support the master agent in, in the middle because oftentimes that master agent can deliver a lot of value around quoting and, and, and sales support. And so it's important to be able to have them as part of this process as well. And most importantly, you can't go in there and, and, and tell these partners who are trying to really kind of shift their business any, you know, in, in, in a new direction, which carries a lot of risk in itself, that they're going to have to make a huge investment in some new platform. 
So, so uh, that's what we're delivering with, with our solution in, in channel flow. Um, and we've seen really great results uh, in the beginning. It is early days. Um, but we have seen our partners are, that are using channel flow come back to us and, and say, look, we've, we've, we've never seen these kinds of opportunities before in our pipeline. They're much higher quality. The sales cycles are much shorter. And they're clearly opportunities that we wouldn't be getting our, our hands into without our partner's ability to go in to take, take us into these, these accounts. So there are some significant benefits in enabling our you know, partners to be able to maintain customer ownership and build customers directly. Let me just kind of take you through you know, what this looks like. And the best way for me to demonstrate this is through this swim lane diagram. I apologize if we're looking a little techy, but um, it, you know, let me just take you through it, and I think it'll it'll help clear things up. Is that you know, okay? This all sounds great, Tim, but how how, how do we do it? Um, well, <clears throat> this is how you do it. So, so so let me just talk about the agent model. This is how we're, this is how most people do it today, without the uh, without channel enablement, without enabling their channels to build directly. This is the typical agent model. So. Um, Agent gets a deal. They probably quoted it. Maybe they you know, they generated a quote somehow. Sometimes they generate those quotes through the service provider portal. Sometimes they generate those quotes in other ways through master agents, etc. But it all starts when the order is created. And so the you know, the service provider comes into the port. Or I'm sorry, the uh, the agent comes into the portal in most cases, or master agent. They create an order. That order gets provisioned. And at the end of the of billing period, an invoice is generated. That invoice goes directly to the customer, and a commit, and then a payment is made to the service provider, and a commission is then paid to the master agent and to the agent. Pretty simple. We all know that model. Okay, so let's talk about how we can augment this slightly without disrupting existing processes. So this top process, the service provider portal process, this doesn't change. It's still the same. Quote goes out, order comes in, services are provisioned, invoice is generated. However, instead of generating it directly to the customer, it get, it's getting pushed through our platform to essentially transform that, that you know, a, an, an invoice file with multiple customers uh, and, mul and, and you know, multiple um, line items that are being billed. Uh, it, it, we, you know, we consume that file, and we say, the first thing we say, okay, let's look at this file. Does this account exist um, currently for this partner? No, it doesn't exist. Okay, create it. Do that automatically. Uh, okay, well, does, does this, now that we've created this account, there, there are, are items on here that need to be built. Are those items associated with this account? No, they're not. Okay, create them. Um, all right, now that you've created them, now let's look at, uh, do, do, at, at the items that we've created for this account uh, and associate a price with them. The partner determines what that price is ultimately because you know, you're billing them most likely cost. Um, or you know, however we want to manipulate the pricing, we can manipulate the pricing through what we call price plans. And so now the invoice is regenerated, you know, goes through the tax process. Uh, is regenerated and it is pushed down to the customer uh, as a partner invoice. The customer makes a payment to the partner and the payment pays the service provider. But, it's, but so, so, so nothing has changed at the service provider level. We fully enabled the, 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 the partner or agent community to now build their own customer. And we've really made it very, very easy because they don't have to. They don't have to administer anything. As the invoice data comes in, accounts don't that don't exist are created. Accounts that, that do exist, we we validate the invoice information against that we're receiving on a monthly basis against what's already in our platform. Oh, they had ten seats last month. Now they have twelve. Add two. So all of that. The, the, that math and, and, and the logistics that, uh, that go on as far as associating you know, uh, customers with products and products with pricing, all of that happens without the partner even going into the platform. And we also need to be able to support a master agent in there. So um, in this case, 
it's, a, it's the same. Again, nothing changes at the service provider level. The only thing we're saying is stop invoicing customers directly. Just send one invoice to the partner. Enable that partner to then generate the invoice to the customer. Allow that customer to make a, a, a payment via a, a payment portal that's branded for that partner that we enable. Um, uh, you know, th allow them to make a payment uh, to the partner, cut a commission out to the master agent, and, and, and the balance goes to the service provider. So that's, that's, uh, that's how we support kind of the, 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 uh, the agent, or I'm sorry, the master agent or the uh, distributor relationship in this ecosystem. So um, there's, you know, there's a lot of technology that's being, that I've seen out there in the channel. Um, this is different than the technology that I'm, I've seen. So most of the technology that I have seen is around partner relationship management. And this stuff is great. You know, you can, it helps with onboarding and recruiting, CPQ, deal registration, co-marketing, branding, content management, lead management, knowledge base. It's a, it, a lot of document ma management, program management, and so forth. We don't do any of that. Our focus is strictly on enabling post-sale. After, after that customer, that, that partner referred to you, engages in, you, with the service provider portal, and a revenue event occurs, I want to handle it from there, and I am the partner. And so the benefits to the service provider is that I have real-time data driven, uh, uh, I'm sorry, real-time data-driven channel management. So I can see, I have visibility down into that channel. I can see what's happening with those invoices and who's getting paid and how they're getting paid and what's getting billed. I have the ability to, uh, to, to, to roll out very easily um, incentive programs because I can, I, can, I can charge my customers differently for, based on different promote, I'm sorry, charge my partners differently based on different, different promotions I'm running. Maybe I'm running the promotion to get the partner focused on selling a certain product, and I want them to make more money on that. I don't want to deliver that, that money to the, to the customer or that price incentive to the customer. I want to deliver it to the partner. So now, I'm, now, I, can, now I can manage partner incentive based on you know, what I want them to sell it by reducing costs on certain products and services as part of a, a, part of a promotion. I, I have full visibility uh, of the quote to order uh, pipeline for you know, on a customer by customer basis. I have a single source of channel data truth, so I can see all of the billing that um, that uh, that that is happening across my uh, partner ecosystem, and I can look at that billing product by product, customer by customer, service provider by service provider. I have cross-sell, upsell analysis, so I can see what's being positioned out there from a quoting standpoint. Uh, Multi-tier visibility, I can, again, I can see through from service provider to master agent to channel partner to customer. Um, and I can offload uh, much of the customer accounts receivable because now I'm consolidating all of those, that AR, uh, for, across multiple customers you know, down to a single partner invoice. Partner benefits. I think we've hit them pretty, pretty, pretty good here throughout the pre presentation between Howard and I. But certainly, account management, invoice automation, customer payment management. So they're, you know, they're collecting the cash. Uh, ERP GL integration. So a lot of these, these, you know, it's great that you can collect the cash. But I need to know what invoices. I need to take the invoice data that that you're generating for me and the payment data, and I need to get that into my accounting system somehow. So we support that through uh, GL integration, and of course, mo probably most important is the ability to control, you know, margins and, and, and prices. Um, most importantly, though, you know, out of you know, we're, we're taking care of the service provider here. We think we're delivering a lot of value there. We're delivering a lot of value to the partner. We believe, but ultimately, we believe this benefits the customer. Um, because now they can rely on a trusted advisor for the selection and purchasing of their technology. That's really important to most enterprises. Uh, they can develop vendor loyalty through, through direct onboarding and provisioning. So 
now they don't have now now they don't have to go directly to the service provider for multiple or or to multiple service providers for multiple services. They can go to one partner that can deliver a, a holistic solution. They can interact through a payment portal, a branded payment portal. That's important for a lot of customers to be able to see invoice history and manage their payments. And they can negotiate pricing directly with the partner. If the partner is the one managing the pricing, that partner may choose to give your products and services away at cost in order to make more margin on other products and services. So, and now they have the opportunity to do that. And that just, that just creates more opportunity for you as a service provider. So I think that the customer ultimately wins in this scenario as well. Um, for those that are interested, I'm going to be at, uh, at Channel Partners, and I'd, I'd love to show you a demonstration of Channel Flow and what that looks like, both from the service provider side as well as the uh, partner side. And um, I have a calendar link. Uh, you'll, you'll, you can download this presentation or capture it here where you can just go ahead and just go ahead and drop in uh, on my schedule and schedule something uh, for us to get together at Channel Partners. Also, feel free to e email me at any time. I'm, I'm happy to um, you know, take you into a demo you know, outside, of the channel, uh, outside of the Channel Partners event and uh, take you through that on, on, more, on a one-to-one uh, -one basis. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Tim. That was great. Yeah. yeah, as a matter of fact, we do have quite a few, uh, some very interesting questions. Clearly, um, you've captured some people's imaginations. Let's start off with uh, the first one. You mentioned during the presentation a few manufacturers who are already providing your service to their partners. Um, who are they? Uh, can we talk to them? Yes, a a absolutely. So we have... Um, it, it, uh, a couple right now that uh, in the unified communications is a service space uh, that we are onboarding. So, so um, and they have some. Uh, this is a pilot program. One of the best ways to roll this out probably is a pilot program. So we have a pilot program running right now with eight by eight. We also have a pilot program running right now with UMA, who is another UCAS uh, B two B UCAS provider. Great. Okay, clarify something for me. Does our partner do the actual invoicing on their system, or do we do it, or do you do it on yours? The partner does it on their system that we enable. Okay. Uh, if that wasn't clear, by the way, to whoever asked the question, feel free to uh, email to Tim, and uh, he'll, he can give you more detail there. Um, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me go into it a little bit more, Howard. I, I, I probably yeah. didn't, didn't go into it enough. So um, our platform is software as a service. Uh, it's a multi-tenant platform. Uh, and essentially what we do is the service provider has an instance, and they have a catalog um, that is in their instance. Uh, that that all that is required is that they help us set that catalog up on their behalf by giving us a list of their products and services that they want to have their partner have visibility to. We essentially just build a tenant underneath that service provider that has access to that catalog, and so all the so now now the partner has the ability to log into their instance of Channel Flow and view that catalog and, and, and take from that catalog products and services that they want to resell and apply the, and, and, and build a price plan. Uh, and then and from that point forward, they can go through the process of generating the invoices at the, end of peer, at the end of the billing period once we receive the invoice data from the upstream service provider. Great. Okay, hopefully that clarified for everybody. Another question just came in that I think we ought to answer immediately because um, it suggests that there hasn't been total clarity. You just mentioned a moment ago that the partner does the invoicing with their system enabled by you. And the question came in, can the MSP brand this solution and make it customer facing? That's a great question. So there's, um, let me just kind of add on to the conversation to, 
to that, I, that the last to, to the last question. So, service provider has their catalog that that, that they enable in our platform. Um, managed service provider comes underneath of them with a tenant or subtenant uh, to be able to uh, to be able to take those catalog items and price them. Invoice data comes through from the service service provider to the MSP to enable the MSP to then generate an invoice to their customer. Customer has uh, can can log into a MSP branded payment portal to go in, view that invoice. It also comes through via email and, and PDF to that customer. But in that email, it will say, you know, to go to go to the this portal, click this link to go in and make payment in the payment portal. Um, that portal is is MSP branded, and uh, it is where they will be able to go in and, and make a credit card payment. We work with about uh, maybe a dozen of your primary payment gateway providers that are that, that you can bring to us, Authorize.net, IP Pay, um, Stripe, you know all, all the major ones. So it's your payment gateway account that uh, that will enable in that customer facing payment portal for you. Okay, hopefully that that certainly clarified it for me because I see the. The, the portal that you mentioned, the payment portal, is that part of their system? Is that part of your system? It's, Who's it's providing part of that our portal? It's, it, it is part okay. of our system. So the managed service provider has two, essentially there's two views at the managed service provider level. There's the administration view where I can go in and set up my price plans, and then there's the customer view uh, where I can make, where the customer can come in and, and, and view invoice history, manage payments, set up auto pay, all those kinds of things. Terrific. I uh, just got a question from a master agent uh, perspective. Can there be multiple service provider data in your platform so that all of their products can be seen in a single sign-on? Uh, that's a great question. So. Um, one of the so from a master agent perspective, we we do this for a master agent um, today called Avant, and we enable um, uh, probably 15 service providers for um, for rebilling mm -hmm. via, through channel flow uh, for their partner community. There's no better answer than an example. Thanks, Tim. That was great. By the way, I just want to mention to everybody, you're probably seeing a feedback form on the bottom of your screen right now. So while we're going through the answers to the questions, I hope you'll take the time out to give us some feedback. It helps us make these presentations as good as they can possibly be for you and as useful as possible. So the next question that I have here, you're saying that um, because they're getting data from our systems, we're also getting transaction data from them. H have you had any resistance to that, that you're seeing into what their transactions are? Uh, resistance for the, 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 the um, so if you're a service provider, uh, you have visibility into uh, your partner's transactions for your products and services. You do not have right. visibility into other transactions for other service providers and, uh, and services that that uh, managed service provider may be adding themselves, like a managed service type solution. So it's only the, the products and services that the service provider is providing to the partner directly. Okay, but I, coming from 40 years in the channel, I think I know what this question is about. Um, basically, I think the, que the, the person asking the question is saying that channel partners are very guarded about their business. Um, they don't like having anybody see what they're doing, how they're doing it. They're very protective of their data, especially they're not public corporations, so they see no reason to share financial data or anything like that. Um, so the service provider can now see the transactions in the partner's system. Do the partners have any problem with that? Have partners given them any, any uh, grief? Okay. I'm sorry. I understand the question better now. So okay. um, 
the they can certainly see the transactions, but they only they can only see the transactions. Um, so there's two price plans. There's there there's the service provider price plan that the service provider is selling <clears throat> uh, those products and services. The prices that they're selling those products and services to the partner, and then there's the partner price plan that controls the prices that they are selling to the customer. As a service provider, I only have visibility to my price plan level. I don't have visibility into the, um, the pricing between the partner and the customer, only between ah, okay. the service provider and the partner. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, th there are a couple of questions that came in about getting started, which terrific questions. Uh, let me just combine two of them. Um, one asks, how long does it take to onboard a partner, and what's the process? It, it, it's 24 hours, and um, <laughs> the process is, is filling out a form, um, an online form, typically, it, 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 which would capture the details that we would need to be able to set that partner up in the system. Okay, so what about actual deployment from, from my perspective as a service provider? What's uh, involved in my deployment? Provider perspective, yeah, so from a service provider's perspective, it's, it's a couple of weeks. Uh, typically, we, you know, the, the, the most of the time is spent going back and forth, setting up the catalog, the way that it want you, the way the service provider wants it set up, um, and uh, structuring their price plans. There can be multiple price plans, by the way. So you may have a, a gold reseller, a silver reseller, and a platinum reseller, and each one has a different price plan. But most of the setup is really a discussion about how to set that up. It is a mat, it, uh, as a matter of level of effort, it's it's probably you know less than ten hours. Fantastic. Okay, so here's a question. Um, <laughs> most of our partners just can't handle producing a recurring invoice. That's one of the points I made in the beginning. And uh, clearly this person agrees with that. Um, his question is, am I to understand that Blue Logics does that for them or somehow enables them to do it? All they have to do is, so there's two things that happen. One is that the, in, that, that the files have, been, have come down to their level. And if those files come down consistently on a regular basis, um, then when those files come down, they'll get, they'll, they'll get a notification, an email that says, your, you know, your, your, your billing files have been uploaded from whoever. Um, they, they, they then, at that point in time, have, all they have to do is go to the, uh, uh, the, what we call the revenue area of our platform, and they're limited just, you know, just doing these things that they need to do. Uh, and they can then stage the invoices if they choose to. And what staging does is it runs it through the tax engine and gives them visibility to all the invoice details, and they can even look at the invoices in PDF format. So they can even look at a staged invoice <clears throat> to see exactly what the customer is going to be seeing when they on their email attachment. And then they confirm, and, and, and they're done. Um, that's, that's all it takes to generate the invoices. And then the payments are, um, if the payments are received electronically through the customer portal, those payments are, are managed by our platform, and they'll have visibility into the payment details at both a global level, so they'll be able to see, you know, all their, their Dunning, their, thir you know, their 30, 60, 90, um, as mm -hmm. well as at the customer level, so they can see, you know, where the customer is in, in, within the, the payment process. If there's an account balance against an invoice, any credits or adjustments, all of those can be managed in the payment area of our platform. But that's really as much as the platform as they'll need to administer. So that... That basically says that any partner who complains that they can't do recurring invoicing really can now. That's, that's fantastic. Okay, I've gone ahead and saved what is usually the first question, and I've saved it for last. 
and that is how much does this cost? And I guess how is it, great how is it charged? Yeah, sure. Um, so, so we have an annual fee that is um, that 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 we apply uh, based on revenue in different tiers. But it's, it, it ranges starting at five thousand dollars a year, and then there's a two percent transaction fee. Mm -hmm. um, so it's pretty straightforward. It, you know, you, you, it, if you it's the most you're ever going to pay is five thousand dollars. Hopefully, you're you know, you're very very successful. And this is a success-driven platform. If you're if you're successful, we're successful. So the incentive is in the right place. Um, and if you're if you're not successful, we want to get you successful. So uh, a, an annual fee of five thousand and a two percent transaction fee is the most you're going to pay. Great. Okay, I've actually run out of questions. If there are any other, please interrupt me here and. You know, enter them into the question portal. Uh, otherwise, I want to remind all of you that you can download the slides from today's presentation right from your interface right now. Uh, later on, you'll be receiving an email from which you can then download a copy of the entire presentation, including the discussion. And um, other than that, I'd like to thank Tim Cook for joining me on this presentation. I think uh, Blue Logics clearly has a a very exciting solution that a lot of partners have been looking for for quite some time. So uh, we will see you next time and wish you all a productive remainder of the day. Thanks for coming. Thanks, everyone.